you know, I want to share something with you that, that we just take for granted because we're just so expert at solving little, little equations. So let's just have some fun taking a look at an equation that unfortunately we don't see a lot of anymore. Check it out. 3x equals 6. Not that difficult. We know exactly what to do. We divide both sides by 3. So we basically are going to perform an operation. And what happens? Well, we see this. Now, technically, this statement is different than this statement, right? Because there's a 3 in here, and there's a 6 here, and there's only an invisible 1 here and a 2 here. But they're equivalent, right? Uh, a solution here is the same as a solution here. These are equivalent equations. And so what I want to do now is just um, celebrate the fact that we can generalize this idea of solving an equation, which is basically what we do. And every step along the way, when we add 7 to both sides, when we divide both sides by 4, for example, it's always the same thing. We're creating an equivalent equation. Well, it turns out that we can look at systems the same way. And we can actually create what are called equivalent systems. And this is awesome, because this is how we're going to proceed to solve linear systems in a, in a parallel fashion to what we used to do when we were kids, right? Because what do we did here? What do we do here? Well, we started off with something complicated, and we kind of massaged it until it became something we can just read off the answer. We're going to do the exact same thing here with more complicated systems. So let me just explain briefly what equivalent systems are. They're just any two systems which are literally equivalent, which means they have the exact same solution set. And as long as they have the same solution set, even if they look different, doesn't make a difference. So check out these, for example. I don't even know where to start. So here's a system, three equations, three unknowns. Here's a system, three equations, three unknowns. And here's a system, three equations and three unknowns. And it turns out that these are equivalent systems, which means that the solution to this is the same as the solution to this and the solution to this. And of course, here you can read off exactly what the solution is. x equals 1, y equals 6, and z equals negative 2. And you can try for yourself and plug these values in for x, y, and z correspondingly and see that, in fact, they satisfy all the equations in each of these systems. So the idea is you start with something complicated, say something like this, and we kind of work it. And by working it, we get to something that's a little bit easier. Maybe we can read off two of the solutions. And then we can use the back substitution to kind of figure out all the solutions. That's the strategy. So each one of these things, while technically they're different systems, they're equivalent systems. And that's the key thing. That's the key thing. OK, so, so for example, the way we go about this is by, to formalize this a little bit, using certain operations. And I want to share with you some operations by looking at a little teeny system, two equations, and two unknowns. So here's the system, two equations, and two unknowns. Here are the allowable operations that we can perform to produce an equivalent system. Okay, So this is kind of like the equivalent of adding 3 to both sides, subtracting 9, or dividing both sides by 7. Now we're going to do this, but we're upping the, the abstraction because we have now lots of equations and lots of variables. So the first thing that we can do, and by the way, these aren't in any order, so there's no first. But one thing we can do, if we want, is we can uh, take two equations and just switch their order. Of course, right? The order of the equations don't matter because they're all collectively together. So if we swap the order of this two, but notice I have to write the entire equation here. I can't just take part of it. I've got to take the entire thing, equal sign, and on the right side together. And then I can copy down this one here. So you can switch the order of any two equations. That's totally allowed, and we will like doing that. Another thing we can do, and again, we've seen this in, in earlier math classes, is, is we could take an equation, and we can multiply both sides of that one equation through by a fixed number. In this case, notice that I just took this equation right here, and I multiplied it through by negative 2. So if I multiply it through by negative 2, I now see negative 2x. I now see plus 6y equals a negative 2 times 0 is still 0. So we can still do that, just like we did before. So that's totally fine. These are still equivalent systems. And now here's the cool thing that we've never done before, really, although we've done it informally. And now I'm trying to make it more rigorous. You can take two equations, and you can, you can add them or subtract them, and then replace that with one of the equations. So for example, I can take this equation and replace it by this equation plus that equation. Now 
Now check out, if I add these two equations, notice that an amazing conspiracy occurs. I see 2x plus negative 2x, they drop out and give zero. So I see y plus 6y is 7y equals 7 plus zero is zero, and so I get this system. And notice this system is now triangular. This is awesome because we know how to deal with this. I can now use back substitution to figure out what y is. Divide both sides by 7, which is allowable. Multiply both sides by a 7th if you want. 7 equals 1, and then once um, y equals 1. And once I know what y equals, I can plug that in here and figure out what x equals. In this case, x equals 0. So you can see that by using these operations, these elementary operations, on the equations themselves, we're producing equivalent systems, and yet we're also working toward the answer. This is in some sense a systematic generalization of just solving that you know, 3x equals 6 that we saw long, long ago. So let me try to uh, just kind of formalize this just a little teeny bit for you. This entire concept here is known as Gaussian elimination, named after the great mathematician Gauss. And the, the strategy is to use these, these different operations to create equivalent systems that land us in a very happy situation where we have a triangular form. Once we have a triangular form, we can use back substitution to figure out z, then figure out y, and then figure out x. Bang. That's the entire concept here. And what I want us to do is actually try an example for ourselves. And these get sticky. And by the way, not hard, but a lot of computation. And I'm lousy at computation. So let's see if we can do this together. So here's a system I want us to solve. It's three equations and three unknowns. And uh, I want us to uh, use Gaussian elimination and these operations that we've seen to create a, uh, a triangular form. So I look at this and say, OK, where do I start? Well, I kind of like the first one. Because first of all, the coefficients are real nice. They're just 1 and negative 1, basically. And equals 4, so that's kind of small. So I like that up there. Now what I want to do is I want to start to use these operations to see if I can get rid of those uh, variables x is here and get rid of a y here somehow so that I have a triangular form. That's the idea. So let's focus on this. See, look, it's, I have this in all different colors. It turns out all the colors, they don't help you at all to solve it. It doesn't make a difference what color you write it in. You're still going to do it. All right. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to add it to the second equation and take that sum and replace it with the second equation. And that's going to use one of those properties. So I'm still having an equivalent system. And now I've got to write everything else out. And I'm going to keep everything else there. The second equation I'm not going to touch. Can't touch this. And now I'm going to add. So now I'm going to replace this one by the sum of this and this. So x plus negative x, that's 0. So I'm not going to write anything there. y plus 4y is 5y. Now you check my work now. And then negative z uh, plus 2z is plus 1z. And then this is 25. OK, so far, so good. So I'm liking this, actually, a lot, because now I've gotten rid of the x here. So in fact, let me just move this up to make it kind of triangular. Let me move this up to the second spot. So I'm going to now um, switch the order of these two equations. I'm going to put the, the second one third and the third one second. I can switch them. I have to switch all of them, though. So this is a system, by the way. I always like to write it this way. So I'm going to now replace it with an equivalent system that looks like this x plus y minus z equals 4. I'm going to now write this one. That's 5y plus z equals 25. See, I'm switching everything, even the stuff on the right. I'm not leaving that negative 8. That would be a mistake. Uh, 3x minus y minus 2z equals negative 8. OK, so I just swap those two things. Totally cool, totally allowable. Now notice I'm, I'm kind of looking triangular-y, don't I? I have to get rid of this and this, and then I'll be good to go. So let's see. How do I get rid of this? Well, one thing I can do is replace this new third equation by the sum of this equation multiplied by negative 3 and this equation. If I multiply this through by negative 3, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a negative 3x, which will then add to this and give me 0. So that's going to be my next move. And just for myself, this is just for, with my family, I'm going to write in here. I'm going to copy everything down, first of all, before I lose it. It's one of these things that you can lose it. It's like sand in your hand. If you're not focusing with laser focus, you can lose the whole thing. 
All right, now here comes the tricky part. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this equation, multiply it through by negative 3 all the way through, and I'm going to then add it to this one. So I'm going to write a little negative 3 out here just to kind of remind me what I'm doing. And now I think we should be good to go. You ready? Here we go. Negative 3, got to distribute negative 3x and then plus 3x is 0, so I'm not going to write anything there. Now I see negative 3y plus negative y is negative 4. Y, okay. Now I have a negative times a negative. That's a positive 3z. So I have 3z minus 2z is just 1z. And then here I see a negative 12. Negative 12 minus 8 is like negative 20. Okay, so that's my system. All right, looking good. So, so now I'm liking this, but now the question is, can I get rid of, let's say, uh, this thing right in here and make it just a z something, and then it would be triangular. So how do I do that? Well, this is going to be a little bit tricky, actually. So what I think I'm going to do, hmm, what do you think I should do? I think what I'll do is I'll divide everything through here by negative 4, negative 4. So let's divide everything through by negative 4, which I'm allowed to do. You can take an equation and multiply it by anything that you want, both sides, as long as it's not 0, I guess. So let's uh, multiply through by negative a fourth, I should say. I, I don't know if I said negative 4 or not, but negative a fourth. Or divide everything through by negative 4, however you want to say it. I don't care. I get cranky when I solve these things. Do you get cranky when you solve? I do. I'm going to copy everything else down. Got to copy it correctly. Classic mistake, by the way, is just to miscopy something. Do you see why even penmanship is important in math? really is. Okay, now I'm going to divide this through by negative 4. That's going to make this thing a y. That's awesome. It's going to make this thing a minus 1 quarter z. And it's going to make this thing, ah, negative 20 uh, times a minus a fourth is 5. So that's kind of nice. I like that. Okay, cool. So I'm liking all this now. And so what should I do now? Well, what I think I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, swap these two things. And I need a new piece of paper. I'm going to keep this way over here just so that we can celebrate that a little bit later. And I am going to take, you see, there's work involved here. No one said math is easy. It don't come easy. You know it don't come easy. Okay, so let's see. What I'm going to do now is just write this out. And now, uh, let's see. I am going to switch the order of these guys. This is great. Look at me. I'm running around here like a crazy man, doing math live, in person, on camera. OK, now. Now what I want to do is I want to keep these two things the same, and I want to multiply this by negative 5, and I want to then add it to this and replace it here. So I want to replace this third person with negative 5 times the second person plus this current person. So how is that going to look? It's going to look like this. I'm going to first write down everything else. Whoops, see, see, look at that, look at that. Do you see what I just did? I almost made a mistake. Okay. And now I'm going to write this guy down. Okay, and now comes the careful stuff. We have to be really careful here. You have to check my work on this. Because what I want to do is I want to multiply this guy by negative 5 and then add it to this guy. And let's do it really carefully and see if we can figure this out. OK, this is going to be tricky. But check out how awesome this is going to be. Negative 5y plus 5y is 0. So in fact, now I've got a 0 in this y spot, and I really am going to have a triangular system in a second. Now, here I have negative 5 times minus a quarter. That's plus 5 fourths. So, so I have 5 fourths plus 1, which is 4 fourths, and that gives me 9 fourths. So I have 9 fourths z. And now I have negative 5 times 5. That's negative 25. If I add 25, that gives me 0. Oh, how awesome is that? Woohoo! Now I'm liking it. By the way, now I'm feeling good. Why? Because first of all, now we have a triangular form. So all this great work we did can now be just discarded. All we care about is this. And now I can use back 
um, substitution to actually find the answer. So let's actually have some fun. Because this, I can easily solve for z, right? What does z have to equal? Well, if you multiply through by 4 ninths on both sides, you see that z equals 0. So we immediately see z equals 0, and I am happy. Now, using that, we can um, back substitution, take the next equation and plug in 0 for z. If I plug in 0 for z, that's y minus a quarter times 0, which is just 0. So y equals 5. I immediately see what y equals. You can't help yourself. The answer just falls in your lap. All that great work, and now you get the payoff. All I've got to do is solve this last equation, but I know y and I know z. So let's just plug it in and see what goes on. What do we see? I see that x plus y, which is 5, minus z, which is 0, equals 4. And so what I see now is that x plus 5 equals 4. And you know the answer. x has to equal negative 1. Phew! Now, we have to record the answer as an order triple. And remember, the order matters. And even though we solved it this way, that's backwards, right? The way we want to represent it is x, y, and z, always. That's the order triple, which in this case will be negative 1, 5, and 0. That is the answer. There's exactly one solution to the system. So we see it's consistent and independent. So if you go back to this original system, remember how scary that was? And we do all the work we did, you see that x equaling negative 1, y equaling 5, and z equaling 0 are the only numbers, the only triple that will actually satisfy each and every one of these. Just for fun, let's just try the middle one. So put a negative 1 in for x, that's negative 3. Negative 3 minus 5, that's negative 8, minus 0 is negative 8. Yes! Awesome. So you can actually use Gaussian elimination to take a really complex system of equations and reduce it down to something. Just basically all I was doing was multiplying by numbers and adding equations together and trying to simplify the system to an equivalent system that's a triangular form. Once that triangular form, we can use back substitution and solve the thing backwards, write the answer out forward as an ordered triple or ordered whatever and you're good to go. Enjoy thinking about Gaussian elimination. It looks hard, but it's just a lot of multiplying and adding. And we can do it, and the benefits are huge. See you soon.